We've got a new addition coming to the Roberts family on Sunday, and it's eight week old golden retriever puppy, Archie. And in choosing Archie from the entire litter, there's six lessons I want to teach and remind you of about prospects choosing you to go forward with in business. So happy Tuesday, this is Darren Roberts, Master Trainer at Impact Training Corporation and the Abundance Accelerant. And today, six areas choosing a new puppy can teach you about winning clients. So here in our Roberts household, we have myself, my wife, and our two kids, and our six and a half year old golden retriever buddy. And yes, we're adding to that with a new puppy. Now essentially, this is gonna be my daughter Brooks dog so four weeks ago we were able to go out to the breeders and play with all the different puppies and essentially brooke was going to choose which puppy she was going to decide is going to be ours and the breeder asked us to list in preference order the top three dogs now of course brooke's decision was a non-verbal decision the dogs don't talk they weren't even making any noise so her decision of course was based on the interaction with the dogs, how they interacted, uh, the look a little bit, how cute they were, and then there were some slight differences between the, the faces and the shapes and how cute they were. And essentially all that came down to is how Brooke felt about the connection with that dog. And we know that 100% of our decisions are based on an emotion. So what if we flipped that and we talk about that in a business sense. What if your business was one of five different businesses that a potential prospect looks at and is shopping around for to decide, all right, who am I gonna be a client of? How do you separate yourself and be the one to be chosen? So I'm gonna give you three non-verbal and three verbal ways that you can check to make sure you're better than the competition and you're the one that's getting chosen. We know that 55% of our communication is nonverbal. So let's start with that. The three nonverbal things to check in your communication with prospects and potential clients. First one is first impressions. Nonverbal, what are your first impressions like and are they better than your competition? Now that can include your websites and your landing pages, your email content, your social media content. How does it look? non-verbally is it better than the competition if you are a face-to-face -face business and your potential clients and clients come to see you what does your facilities look like right from the entrance and before the entrance your branding your cleanliness the sign is old and and run down and mucky or is it sharp and professional the first impressions when a potential client comes into your facility or your uh, business, or if you're going out to them, how do things look? Is your car clean? Is the car branded? What do you look like entering? Do you look confident and excited to see them? What about the visual tools you use in your communication and your sales best practice? We know that we need to have some visual tools as well as your verbal communication. So do you have a needs analysis? Is there a written or a typing component to your presentation? Do you have a success plan or an action plan which increases appointment rate, shows rate and close rates? Do you have some proof tools to utilize to show your expertise and do they look sharp and do they look professional? Do they have colors on them for those visual people? And the third thing from non-verbal is your body language. Are you mirror and matching your potential customer's body language? Because people like people like themselves. Are you aware of that? Or do you just go about your presentation in the way that you do it? And hey, if it works out, so be it. Let's go across to verbal. Three verbal things that you can do to increase your chance of being chosen from prospects that are shopping around. Are you seen as an expert? And verbally, you do that by teaching the prospect things that they don't know. If you can teach the prospect something they don't know, you'll be seen as an expert. If you can connect that to a true, unique selling point, then people stop shopping around and you get market share. So what are you teaching verbally as part of your presentation to be seen as an expert? In your communication with a prospect, are you creating a compelling reason? Do you understand their compelling reason through the questioning that you're 
giving and also that needs analysis that I spoke about before. We know that 100% of decisions are through an emotion. So if you don't know their compelling reason before talking about your product and service, you're not going to be able to communicate it to create maximum value. So you're doing that better than your competition. And the third thing for verbal is are you ishing? <laughs> now, ishing means are you slightly changing the way that you're communicating to match the person in front of you, to match your potential client and your prospect. Sometimes that's speeding up, sometimes that's slowing down, sometimes that's more detail, sometimes that's less detail, sometimes that's more hand gestures, less hand gestures. But are you aware of it? Or again, are you just delivering in a manner that is yours? Meaning you may not connect and communicate with maximum value to that customer. Are you doing that better than your competition. As I said, if you are, if your business is one of those five puppies <laughs> in the pen and your customer is going to choose one of you to do business with, are you doing these things to make sure you stand out? Now, to really understand that, you probably need to shop around at your competition a little bit and find out what they're doing and making sure you're doing things more effective. So we got a big week ahead of us. Looking forward to the weekend and having Archie as part of the family. I want you to reflect on those six things, three non-verbal and three verbal. If you'd like some help with it, then just reach out. Let us know or put some comments in below. We actually, from a behavioral style perspective and matching behavioral styles, we have a couple of opportunities coming up. We've got a full day workshop this Friday and a one hour workshop on the 1st of September. So if you're keen to find out more about that, just put DISC, D-I-S-C, in the comments below or reach out. You guys have a great Tuesday. We'll see you next time for the Tuesday Tick on Tick. Bye for now.